Hey guys, Stealth here. Welcome back to more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today, as you can see from the title, we're facing off the Alfa Romeo against Toyota in uh, an Italian versus Japanese destroyer battle. I'm going to let the AI handle the ships themselves, but I have designed them. Let me show you around. This is the Alfa Romeo 3307 GTA. Uh, it is an Italian gunboat. It is, well, it is not very heavily armed, sadly. Because most of the displacement goes to this big engine. It's a gas turbine engine that goes 40 knots, or that allows the ship to go 40 knots. That means that the main armament is really only a couple of 4-inch guns on the bow, 4-inch guns on the stern, and one torpedo launcher amidships. Mostly because the ship has to have one. Sadly, with an engine efficiency of 86.4, you're not going to get the most out of this engine. And this is always a problem with the gas turbine. It's a great engine. But it kind of struggles. Um, I wonder, could I... Yeah, no, not really. Diesels, no, diesels don't work either. No, gas turbines is what we're at. Now, this guy, fast, pretty maneuverable. I gave them a balanced rudder to make them more efficient in the turn, to maintain their speed while turning. They're going to need that, because they're going up against the Toyota Torp 4. This is an Italian, sorry, um, Japanese experimental destroyer. 3,918 tons of destroyer. No, that's heavier than most battleships from 1900. Um, so the, the original ships really got displaced by destroyers. They have 10% more beam than normal, maximum bulkheads. They can travel 15,000 kilometers. This is mostly because I had a lot of displacement left that I really didn't know what to do with. Now, the Torp 4 gets its name from all the torpedo launchers. She has two torpedo tubes, singular, more oriented towards the bow, and two uh, singular sterns, the double, another double, and a triple. Why not a uniform type of torpedo launcher? Well, then the AI dumps all the torpedoes in the water, and you're just going to be sitting there reloading for the next, well, in case of a triple launcher or quad launcher, 10 minutes or so. So I thought, you know what? We're going to split this up. And this way, the enemy destroyer, in this case the Italian one, is going to constantly be dancing around torpedoes. Sadly, because of this weird torpedo loadout from the Torp 4, they got a bit of an aft displacement issue, um, which kind of counteracts the pitch issue that the Italian gunboat has. Aside from that, um, well, she has all the advanced gimmicks, because I simply had too much displacement to work with. Electrohydraulic turrets, it auto reloads for those four inch double barrel guns. They didn't upgrade the shells at all because they're not really supposed to use that that much. Generation one radar, they even got radio direction finding. <laughs> That's pretty high end for a destroyer. Sonar one, coincidence range finder, and they get an increased complement of torpedoes, which means that they get a lot of them. They get 12 per launcher, for, for example, for the triple. They just essentially get three uh, three shots per launcher. Um, no, actually f four, I think. Oh, sorry, no, it's three. This is a quad launcher. I kept thinking it was a triple. It's a quad. Anyway, um, these guys are going to duke it out. I'm not going to really put much effort into controlling them because I'm going to both let them be controlled by the AI. Let's see how these guys do. You're going to get control. No? Well, okay. The Alfa Romeo seems to be intent on going away from the Toyota Torp 4. Not sure why. Don't know what the plan is. Not sure if the Italian gunboat has a plan. What's the Japanese boat doing? They're coming in. Look at these torpedo loadouts. <laughs> oh, that's a weird boat. It's a weird boat. Okay. Where are you going? Like, why are you running? Oh, now you stopped running. You do know where the enemy is. Your torpedoes can hit at 15 clicks. Yeah, there you go. You just launched them. Uh, this is a single torpedo launcher, which is utterly standard, standard, standard. So, you're looking at a single launcher, 18-inch, standard propulsion, uh, no electric, uh, sorry, electric torpedoes, no fast torpedoes, no oxygen fueled, nothing. Just your standard torpedoes. As opposed to the Torp 4, which has fast torpedoes. Now, this means that if they play their cards well, 
they might actually be able... Oh, they've already detected them. They might actually be able to hit the gunboat. Holy crap. You're not supposed to have a turning circle nearly that good. For a ship this long? Traveling at full speed? This is very, very, very good. Now this guy has already expended his torpedoes. Um, they only get they only get two, but they reload in a little over two minutes. So yeah, this guy's out of torpedoes. The other ship dodged them, and that means that the Italians are now going to have to really close the distance and focus on gunboating, which is what I had them designed them to do. They carry semi-armor piercing shells. Uh, these guys have upgraded their ammunition as well as turrets and uh, loaders. And they got those two inches more as, well, a sort of side benefit. Because I had some space next to the main tower. So I thought, you know what, these could be useful. Now the Alfa Romeo has detected the torpedoes. And is probably going into full panic mode right now. As the Toyota Torp 4 is working on this. Look at this turning circle. This is supposed to be 530. The way that thing dodged was 200 or 300 meters. This is completely inaccurate. That's weird. Okay. Your torpedo range is pretty good. But the moment that you launch, those torpedoes get detected. Because they have a massive profile of plus 27%. They're 21-inch torpedoes. They hit hard. But I think they're going to have some trouble actually hitting the Alfa Romeo. And the Alpha is just seemingly dancing around. There you go. They launched another set. Immediately picked up. And this is exactly what I wanted. To see the Toyota Torp 4 just constantly throw out a torpedo. Because the single launchers are almost reloaded. The dual launchers reload in a little about 5 minutes. And these guys reload in a little under 10. Could you actually open up? Maybe? You're putting the entire Regia Marina to shame this way. Good lord. Make an effort. Your range is good enough. But if you keep up with the weird maneuvers, you're not going to be able to actually do anything. Unless the plan of the Alfa Romeo is to just wait out the Toyota, have it launch all of its torpedoes, and then close the distance and gun it down. It might be able to do that. It has more firepower when it comes to gun power. Wow, you finally hit something. Good on you. Looks like the secondary tower is already a bit damaged. Jeez, the AI is still so shit at controlling their ships. The Toyota Torp 4 is almost out of torpedoes. The singles have two launches left. This guy has two launches left, and this guy also has two launches. And they're basically putting as many torps into the water as possible. The Alpha detects it, and immediately changes course. Zero opportunity for the Japanese ship to get these anywhere near the Italian gunboat. Try harder. Try harder. <clears throat> Rudder damaged. Great. Now, in case you're wondering, by the way, how I got the adjustments for beam and draft, a uh, link down below in the description is how you can get the 1.05 beta. I constantly keep getting asked uh, questions, how do you get the 1.05 beta? It's very easy. Linked down below in the description is explained how. It's not part of some exclusive program or anything. This is so boring to watch. Alpha Romeo, make an effort. I thought you're named after a, a proud Italian car brand. So maybe actually go do something. I wonder how many car jokes we're going to get in the comments this way. Okay, you smoked up. Great. Oh, you're out of torpedoes. The only thing they got left is the quad launcher. The singles and the duels are out. So now they're just gunning it out. 
Rudder's been damaged. Flooding on the Toyota Torp 4. They're firing AP? Oh yeah, of course they are. Um, because I had so much displacement left on the Toyota, I actually gave them all maximum armor. So they get 3 inches of armor all around. And with that, the thing can actually take quite a bit of damage, surprisingly. So I suppose that even with these shells... Yeah, it's 50-50 whether I pen them or not. But the Toyota is a pretty big target. So this might make it more easy to kill it off. And this is also when that additional firepower from the Italian comes into play. Let's see. 65% structural versus 73% here. But if this guy plays his cards right, and it looks like he might, he's going to get four torpedoes in on the Alpha. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, you screwed. You messed up. You got two engines out. You got flooding on about half your ship. Buoyancy is dropping to 20%. 15%. But the Toyota is not coming away from this fight without a scratch either. They're down to 50% uh, buoyancy and 38% structural. The Alpha is dead in the water. She can do about 6 knots. If that. Mm. This could get interesting. Oh wow! They won! They won! Despite taking three torpedoes, they won. Okay. Interesting. I had not expected that performance out of the Alfa Romeo 33 of 7 GTA. So now, what are we going to do? We're going to pit this thing up against another ship. Another destroyer from a different country. Let's go. And here is the new contender. This, again, is my ship. Or, well, one of the ships. This is a survivor. This is the Alfa Romeo 33 of 7 GTA. That just won against the Toyota Torp 4, and now we're going to take on the Aston Martin Vanquish, which is a British destroyer. It has 15, no, sorry, 12 5 inch guns. It has um, a lot of survivability and a lot of high tech gear. It has the auxiliary engine 4, gear turbines 2, because it's not particularly quick. It's only doing 33 knots, but that might actually help. It has a shaft 3 engine, it has an unbalanced rudder to make it a very quick to turn ship at 210 meters. She has a lot of focus on her gunpower. She's carrying soft capped ballistic shells, that is HE shells, and capped ballistic 2 AP shells, because this guy is designed to gun down anything it faces. To that end, it has electrohydraulic turrets to always keep the guns on target and to make sure these guns fire fast semi-auto loaders. Why semi? Um, well, because I couldn't fit the full autoloaders, sadly. Super heavy shells, increased ammo, so they carry a thousand shells per turret. That's a lot of ammo. Because it is a destroyer, it always has to have one torpedo tube, so that's the one deck tube that they have over there. It's a single shot. That's all they get. They get one torpedo of 24 inch. If this thing hits, it's probably going to demolish the enemy. If it does not, then, well, they just wasted essentially 30 tons of displacement, which isn't that bad, because they still got all the guns. What the ship lacks is radar, and that could be a problem, because without a good radar, your accuracy is going to suffer. So that is the one downside that this destroyer has. And fitting a radar on is just not going to work. It's too heavy. So now let's see how the Aston Martin Vanquish is going to go against the Alfa Romeo 3307 GTA. Same range, starting range, 12,000 meters. You're going to get controlled by the AI. And let's see how the car wars continue. <clears throat> Look at the turning circle on this guy. It's a pretty standard destroyer design, this guy. But then again, that does not mean it's a bad ship. This still could be a very good ship. What I'm especially concerned about for the Alfa Romeo is that while it is faster, it has less firepower. And not only that, but the range on these guns is less than the range of those 5 inchers that the British, uh, British destroyer carries. So that could be problems for the Italians. Right now though, 
it looks like they're not even going to get into range, as the British are not fast enough. The British can do 33 knots, which is uh, <laughs> a whole 7 knots slower than the Alfa Romeo. So right now, um, yeah, I don't think that this is going to work out too well. And I'm going to cut out a bit of the video here. Here we go. The Alfa Romeo just launched one of her torpedoes. And I wonder when the Aston Martin Vanquish is going to pick that up. Her sonar should have no problem picking up that torpedo, because it's nothing special. And for some reason, the Alpha continues to maintain her distance. What I think she'll do is launch another torpedo, and then the AI is going to kick in and go, Oh, we don't have any torpedoes left, so we're going to have to turn in and gun them down. And there we go. Now, the Aston Martin detected the torpedo. Uh, there it is. And it seems to be doing a couple of S-turns to shake the torpedo as, as if it was a tracking torpedo, but of course it's not. It's not something that is in the game at the current stage. So the Aston Martin over here is perfectly fine. There is another torpedo coming in, but considering all the maneuvers that the DD is doing, I don't think that that's going to be too much of a problem. At this point, though, the Alpha is going to have to gun it out against the Aston Martin. Can they do that? I wonder. You have detected... Hold on. I'm not so sure that this guy has detected the Alpha. Because they don't have a radar. There. Now she spotted her. Because she's just relying upon visual detection. She doesn't have radar. But now that she has them detected, she's going to close the distance and allow those guns to start opening up. Here we go. 8.7% chance to hit, 9%. That's about even to the 4-incher. Th uh, the and the 4-incher fires faster. It has a reload of 4.2 seconds. This guy fires in 8.8 .8 seconds. But if you get hit by the AP, it takes 30 damage. If you get hit by this AP, you only take 23. So, considering the volume of fire that the Aston Martin can put out, I think it could be trouble. Yeah, there we go. Overpen, flooding. Oh, they're going to close the distance. At this point, if... Oh, that hurt a lot. <clears throat> the Aston Martin is firing HE and the Alpha is firing AP. Oh, the HE is going to rip you apart. This is murderous. Look at this thing. Dead. Holy crap. So they didn't need a whole lot of time to detect and eliminate the Alpha. Which is just going to go down in flames. Okay. So that means that the Brits are going to continue on to the next round. So the British can stay and we can pitch them against the Germans. What sort of destroy can we make for the Germans? Let's have a look. And here we go. This is the new contender for the Aston Martin. Uh, this is the Volkswagen Torpedo Beetle. Yes, that is <laughs> an okay pun as far as my dad jokes go. The Volkswagen Torpedo Beetle is a over-engineered piece of German engineering, as most German designs go. Turbo electric engine, auxiliary engine 4, meaning electric batteries 2, electric steering, unbalanced rudder, shaft 3, giving her a torpedo dodging circle of 200 meters. That is her torpedo dodging ability. 200 meters. Doesn't mean that she needs that, of course. No, 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 no. Because this ship has sonar 3. Meaning that her torpedo spotting capability is exceptionally good at 5 kilometers. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to save her, though. Because she still has to work to try and, uh, well, not get hit by that short-range 24-inch torpedo that the Brits carry. These guys have a stereoscopic rangefinder 5. They get a Generation 3 radar. Sonar 3, as mentioned. Electro-hydraulic turrets, enhanced loaders, electric torpedoes, 20-inch. They carry a 2, 3, a 2, and a 4. So they can put quite a lot of torpedoes in the water. And... With their improved detection capabilities, they can definitely detect, uh, dictate what sort of encounter it's going to be. And gun down the enemy with their single 5-inch guns. Now, these things are no joke. They fire light shells. They take 6 seconds to reload. 
and damage quite heavily. AP is good, HE of course is better, and with the amount of HE type uh, base views, they should be capable of pinning the English destroyer. So let's have a look and see how well this guy is going to do, the Volkswagen Torpedo Beetle. I'm going to hand it over to the AI. We're going to try and spot the enemy. This is not one of my best designs. <clears throat> um, I in Oh, by the way, something I forgot to mention. It has minus 9% draft and minus 15%, sorry, minus 9% beam and minus 50% draft. And with that, it's proving to be a pretty sleek and low target. Also, semi submersible apparently, depending on the, uh, <laughs> the waves. We have already acquired the target. We can already shoot the target. And the target, as we have designed before, the Aston Martin can have problems actually getting a detection. Because without a radar, it can get a detection of about 6 kilometers, depending on the size of the target. And this guy happens to be very sleek. Now, let's put a lot of torpedoes in the water. All the launchers have been used. So now to see if the Aston Martin is going to respond in time. Because right now it is completely oblivious. It only knows that it's getting shot at, but it doesn't even know by what. The Volkswagen Torpedo Beetle, um, not being able to identify the target, thinks that AP is the better target choice, or the better shell choice, and just uses that. The torpedoes apparently are not going to be an issue at all. Because at her current course, the Aston Martin Vanquish is not going to get attacked by those things at all. She's not even in the path. She has, however, not yet detected the torpedoes. That's how stealthy those things are. I had to reduce them to 20 inch, otherwise the ship wouldn't exactly fit. Hold. This is when she detects the first torpedo. Which I think is this one. So at 800 meter range, she suddenly wakes up and she goes, Oh crap. Torpedoes have been detected. Veers over to starboard. Range is now 9.2. She's still taking fire. At the moment that she gets close enough, all of those guns will open up. And this German destroyer could sink very quickly. She's about to put more torpedoes in the water. And with that, she has run out of her two tubes. Her dual torpedo tubes are out. Now the Brits are, when it comes to speed, fairly even with the Germans. They get 33 knots. I think the British get, what was it, 32, 33? It's pretty even. So at the moment, the Germans get a couple of essentially free shots at the British destroyer. If they can make that work, they can potentially cripple it before it gets too close. There's another hit. Overpen. Right through the fore belt and out the stern. I have no idea where the torpedoes are at. Here. There we go. The Austin Martin Vanquish. 9.2 kilometers out. She's detected the torps. Absolutely no problem. And continues to steam towards where she suspects that the fire is coming from. Meaning that the Torpedo Beetle is going to have to get out of the way. And yeah, this is potentially a problem. She's running a little low on AP. Actually, no, that's not a problem because the HE is going to be more interesting for her. Her HE shells are going to be more useful because she's only getting over pens. 8.9. Seriously, not having radar is such a weakness for the Aston Martin. But... She's already pretty... Well, when it comes to price, they're pretty even. 42.9, 39.9. So, the Aston Martin is even slightly more expensive. But she cannot close the distance. She's doing 33 knots. The Germans are doing 33 knots. And on top of that, the Germans can still launch torpedoes at her. I'm kind of waiting for the moment that they do that, but I think they're not actually doing it because this uh, torpedo launcher on the stern here is getting blocked by her own depth charge dispenser. So she's not able to shoot her own torpedoes because they're getting blocked by their own parts of the ship. She's now switching to HE. And the Austin Martin is in trouble. There you go. S destroyed the secondary tower. Yikes. That's not good. By the way, in the comment section, let me know if you like this kind of format. Um, I just, I'm basically thinking this up on the fly. I thought, you know what, we're going to do one destroyer, one fat destroyer against a sleek destroyer. 
And that was the Alfa Romeo against the Toyota. Um, <clears throat> and then I thought, wow, that's a bit of a short video. Let's make it a bit longer by introducing a new contender. So every time the survivor continues on to the next round. And of course, I can also do this for uh, torpedo boats, although you have far less options there. Battleships, uh, heavy cruisers, battle cruisers, light cruisers, whatever you prefer. And I will launch a poll to see what the next one's going to be. Because currently, the 1.5 beta is still being updated almost daily. So campaigns are currently not an option. Because every time that they update the campaign, or every time that they update the beta, the campaigns just become invalidated. And they delete the saves. So running a campaign right now, as much as I would love to, is not feasible. What else is not feasible is the Aston Martin against this very sleek German destroyer. Because this Volkswagen is demolishing the Aston Martin. Not quickly, but it doesn't need to. Because it is ridiculously accurate at 10% at full speed. Sorry, at flank speed even. Uh, she doesn't need her torpedoes. And the Aston Martin is going to start to slow down. She's only doing 24 knots, meaning that the Volkswagen is going to have an even easier time. Yeah, don't laugh. The Aston Martin is slower than the Volkswagen. <laughs> That's just how it goes. I think that this thing is going to start flooding pretty soon. There goes another compartment. Yeah, this is not going to end well for the Aston Martin. I think they will not even get an opportunity to spot what it is that is shooting them. There. It gets progressively worse. 274 damage, more flooding. Ship is slowing down to 19 knots. More partial pens, more fire damage. This poor thing. It hasn't fired a single shot simply because it cannot detect the enemy. But I was quite concerned that because the Austin Martin's design here is so good, it, with a radar, would just demolish whatever it comes into contact with. Especially with a good turning circle like this. It is essentially immune from torpedoes. Although the guys from this guy, the, the torpedoes from the Volkswagen got close. But it's essentially invulnerable to torpedoes. Um, it can gun down any target, and it has an okay amount of armor to make sure that the HE shells and AP shells don't hit too hard. What are you doing? Are you just threatening now, or are you wasting... Oh, there we go. You're wasting shells. Oh, there's more torpedoes in the water. Oh, <laughs> look at that turn. Whoa. Okay. Interesting. We still got 328 shells left on the German destroyer. <clears throat> which should be ample to eliminate the British destroyer. But, if they manage to mess this up, if they fire every single shot they have, I know that the AI is going to close the distance because it doesn't know what else to do. It's going to move towards the British destroyer and just sit there, essentially waiting to die, because then the 5-inch guns will kill it. So while it looks bad for the British, it's not over. And if they can just survive and hope that the German destroyer misses enough... By the way, they are closing in. I'm not sure why this guy is allowing this. But if they close in, they might start getting some return fire, the Volkswagen. The Aston's 44 and 44, so they're really pretty badly damaged. Doing 18 knots still. Ooh. Destroyed main tower. There goes your fire control. There goes more flooding. Engines out. Have they still not detected them? Why is this thing so sneaky? 4.9, they still haven't seen them. I need to have a look at what sort of target profile this guy has. Because it is so hard to see. But even at 4.5 kilometers, you can barely detect this thing. And all the while, the Volkswagen is just taking the Austin Martin apart. 
What's your range? Four. Still have not been detected. Three eight. Three seven. Three six. Could you please detect the enemy? Finally. 4105, they've detected the enemy at a range of 3.4. Good grief, this thing is so sleek. That it just cannot be detected. And all the while, those 5 inch guns will slowly murder you. So the Austin got a couple of shots off, but didn't actually hit anything. And the Volkswagen escaped completely unharmed. Interesting. Not the outcome I was expecting. Now I'm going to leave you guys here. Uh, tomorrow is going to be the next part of this video. When the German Volkswagen Torpedo Beetle takes on the Renault Mega. Which is the French contester to, well, to see if this guy can actually be sunk. See you guys tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed the format. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments.